Welcome back to Simply Women's Health with CJ. Today we're going to do part two of the endometriosis series focusing on treatment options. If you haven't had a chance to watch part one, I, I would encourage you to do so where we talk about uh, what is endometriosis and how is it diagnosed. Um, so as far as treatment options, a lot depends on your, the severity of your disease. If you have a lot of pain or if you have severe endometriosis, and keep in mind, some women will have very mild endometriosis with severe symptoms and vice versa. Some women will have severe endometriosis and have minimal symptoms. So treatment options are really going to be based um, from your provider on, on how much pain you're in and how, what is the severity of your disease. It's also going to be based on what are your future uh, plans for pregnancy. How do you plan to have babies? How soon do you plan to have babies? They're also going to be very mindful of your age. Some people are diagnosed with endometriosis as teenagers, and so you, their treatment options are going to be much different than those patients who are in their late 30s or early 40s who have completed their childbearing years. First line of defense is um, typically going to be medication use. Um, some women are able to manage their endometriosis uh, symptoms with just over-the-counter pain relievers, ibuprofen, uh, naproxen, heating pads, those kind of stuff. For some people, the over-the-counter stuff is not quite strong enough, and they need something a little bit stronger, and that is certainly something that, they're, that you're a provider can provide for you. If you're going to use pain relievers, I usually recommend to my patients that you start taking your um, medication a day or two prior to the onset of your menstrual cycle. That's when most people will start experiencing pain is right before the onset of their menstrual cycle. Because again, these little cells are out there and they're just, they have chemicals in them called prostaglandins and the prostaglandins will start the, the cramping um, process to get ready for that menstrual cycle. Um, narcotics are actually not the best plan for people with endometriosis. Narcotics do not work on those prostaglandins and they are highly addictive and this is a chronic condition. So most providers are going to steer clear of, of providing any, any kind of narcotics for uh, pain management for women with endometriosis. The most common thing to use is going to be hormonal birth control. There's two different kinds. There's what's called combined contraceptives that contain both estrogen as well as progesterone. The progesterone tells the ovaries to stay asleep um, and it keeps the, the lining thinned out and it can make your periods much shorter, much lighter. Um, if I have somebody who has endometriosis, I will typically, and they don't desire pregnancy, I will put them on a combined contraceptive, and then we will do what's called continuous dosing, so they only have to have three or four periods a year. Um, some people don't want to be uh, saddled with taking a pill every day, or for whatever reason, they don't do well with estrogen. Uh, for those patients, uh, the progesterone only, such as Depo or the uh, the IUD that contains progesterone are very good options because those two will again um, bring the periods down to um, very, very short, very light or even non-existent for some women. There are some other medications out there uh, that they, they, are, they are antagonists um, that actually completely shut down the ovaries. There are also what are called aroma aromatase inhibitors. I'm going to be honest, I am a nurse practitioner. Those are not medications that I prescribe. Those patients need to be managed very closely. Those medications have a lot of side effects, and I leave that up to the physician group to, to manage those patients. Some patients elect to go to have surgery. Some will opt to do the laparoscopic surgery that we talked about in the first video, where they will go in with a camera and look around. And, um, and maybe excise or eliminate some of that scar tissue. The, that's called uh, lysis of adhesions. Lysis of adhesions gives about 75% of patients um, some pain relief, and, um, but it is, not, it is not permanent. So that's not something that you want to plan on being the end-all, be-all. Um, for women who have been found to have endometriomas, um, the vast majority of the time, we just leave them alone. If the endometrioma is uh, about 
four to five centimeters in diameter, which uh, as a four to five centimeters is about the size of a golf ball. If you have a, a an ovarian cyst, an endometrioma that's full of um, this full of blood, these chocolate cysts that are bigger than four to five centimeters. The, your surgeon, your GYN may want to remove those. If it's less than that, typically we just leave them alone because of the potential damage to the ovary. Unless, of course, it's causing you pain, in which case you want to talk to your provider about that. Um, the end all be all, the, the biggest answer of all for this is going to be hysterectomy. Um, hysterectomy is done by a gynecologist and it is very invasive. It is very final. If that's something that you feel like is in your best interest, I'm going to strongly, strongly recommend you make an appointment with a gynecologist and talk about the risks versus benefits of undergoing um, a surgery that is as invasive as a hysterectomy. What else? Um, endometriosis, um, we don't know why, but after pregnancy, a lot of women report a, a decrease in their endometriosis symptoms. Women who breastfeed, probably because their estrogen levels are suppressed while they're breastfeeding, they too have an improvement in their symptoms. Uh, the women who are menopausal, they're no longer having menstrual cycles. Those women also report uh, a vast improvement in their endometriosis uh, symptoms. So this, this video has been provided to you today not as a replacement to meet with your um, gynecological provider, rather than for you to get enough information so that when you do meet with them, you have a better idea what questions to ask to best address your own personal health care needs. If you feel as though it's been helpful, I would love it if you would subscribe. If you would like, share whatever you feel compelled to do. If you have questions or if there's something you would like to hear about, I will put my email address at the bottom of this video. That's it for today. This is CJ at your cervix.